and send. All right, submitted all my pre-production paperwork to SAG. Phew, so glad to have all that paperwork done. Oh, they already responded. Oh, With more paperwork. Hello filmmakers, Ash here, and welcome to Film It Yourself. Congratulations, you've sent your SAG pre-production paperwork away and now it's on to production. What, did you think you were done with your paperwork? <laughs> Not even close. So let's continue going over all the massive amounts of SAG paperwork and rules you need to follow during production and post-production. First up, production. Once your film has started production and you've received the green light from SAG, you first need to have all union actors fill out a SAG principal performers contract. This will take the place of your usual deal memo. Next, for the payroll company you hired, you'll need to have your SAG actors and anyone else on the payroll fill out either a W-4 or a W-9 form. If your actor or crew member on the payroll files their taxes as an individual, then you'll need them to fill out a W-4. However, if your actor or crew member files their taxes as an LLC, then you'll need them to fill out a W-9. You can download either of these forms from the IRS website here. Now, I suggest that you have either the producer or if you have one production coordinator, collect these from the actors and place them in a binder organized by each actor's name. This way you will know exactly where all your SAG paperwork is and easily check to make sure each actor has signed all the documents. Next up, timesheets. Because you've hired a payroll company and SAG has strict rules, you'll need to track every moment your actor is on set from call time to makeup and wardrobe time to meal breaks to even travel time. So again, make sure your producer or production coordinator has every cast member, union or not, fill out the SAG provided timesheet. And speaking of meal times, SAG has strict rules about how many and how often actors need them. It is a union after all. <laughs> Each meal break must be no less than 30 minutes and the first meal break must occur within six hours of call time. Now, if your shoot is going long enough to require a second meal break, it must occur within six hours after the end of the first meal break. Failure to follow these rules can result in fines, so make sure you follow all of SAG's rules. You can read more about them here. Also, note that the standards for these might have changed under the current global crisis, so make sure you check the SAG website for updates. Oh boy, that was a lot, right? You're probably thinking we're done. Nope, sorry. Next up is post-production. In post-production, you'll need to submit a final cast list that reflects any changes to the cast made before or during production. And finally, you'll need to fill out and submit a pension and health contribution form. This form dictates the percentage of how much the actor gets paid towards their pension and health fund. If you have deferred your actor's payment, it will dictate the amount you will pay them in the future if your film makes over $5,000. And that's it! You've officially finished all the SAG requirements and have survived the paperwork landslide. <laughs> what? You don't believe me? I mean, I could invent some more paperwork for you to do if you want. Oh, okay, you're good. Okay, now officially sending in all of my SAG paperwork. Oh, phew, I guess that really was the last of the paperwork. 